The INFJ's most natural state is when they are consciously unconscious, having one foot in the conscious moment and the other in the unconscious continuum. The unsettledness that others may feel is likely connected to the unfamiliar feeling felt in the presence of someone who is operating seamlessly in two realms of consciousness. The INFJ can stand in this gap effortlessly. In fact, it is where they belong. INFJs occupy these two spaces as one complete space, where the temporal meets the supratemporal. Imagine being able to view Ruben's vase and face simultaneously as one image, while still being able to recognize both objects individually. This complexity is not complex at all for the INFJ. It is as natural as breathing. In fact, the more complex the dynamic, the easier it is to understand. This is not a boast or a brag, but a simple and quiet reality, one that few people appreciate or understand. To some, this might sound like new agey, super spiritual mumbo jumbo. Far from it. In fact, it is simply describing how to be human. With all the advancements the human race has accomplished, ironically, being human is relatively uncharted territory. Those that have ventured into this unexplored landscape return changed and simultaneously shunned. It would seem that becoming human is the most foreign thing unknown to man. Welcome to the unacknowledged and unfortunately even ridiculed reality of the INFJ. For the INFJ, she or he longs to be able to share this space with others, or at the very least show what can be discovered in such a space. However, to the INFJ's astonishment and utter amazement, this space is mostly ignored, rejected, and even attacked. Deepening the despair for the INFJ, however, is their understanding as to the why of people's rejection of it. The light that can emanate from the conscious unconscious just seems too bright and illuminating for people to approach. That's another advantage of standing in the conscious unconscious, being able to see not only what people do, but why they do it. This is a responsibility that needs to be mastered in order to remain in this space. This is the definition of being human, and why it is the road less travelled. The light of this space doesn't belong to the INFJ. It is simply available to those that welcome it. For the INFJ, who is well acquainted with this light, desires deeply for everyone and everything to discover and experience what they have stumbled upon. This light is essentially truth, and the truth is, the light does not blind, but makes one see. The light is not intimidating, it is inviting. The light is not scary, it eliminates fear. The light is not imposing, the light is you. Every so often someone does show interest, curiosity and openness to this otherworldly yet completely earthly reality that the INFJ holds. However, please understand, it is not the hope of the other seeing and experience what could be called the inner light of the INFJ that most excites the INFJ, although this is a piece of it. It is much more about the anticipation that the other, as a consequence of peering into the space of the INFJ, will recognize their own light and ability to stand in their own space. Recognizing the truth of who they really are, that they too occupy a space within that has many rooms and far-reaching views that carries a knowing of its own and a peace to call home. The witnessing of this awakening and the privilege of standing so close to a real-time miracle is why an INFJ exists. Taking a little look inside just might find who we need.